Hello and welcome to this telecoms.com webinar produced in association with CBIDIA. My name's Mike Hibbard and I'm delighted to be joined today by Amit Daniel, who's Executive Vice President for Marketing and Business Development at CBIDIA. Today we're going to be looking at something that seems to be under constant discussion at the moment, namely the ways in which operators can improve their performance by exploiting the masses of customer data that they generate every day. Mobile operators may be overlooking their greatest asset as they fight in crowded markets for a competitive edge. To win out they must increase customer spend, reduce churn and attract new subscribers, all against the backdrop of intensifying competition, high pressure regulation and the demands of continued investment. The vast array of customer data that they generate could be a powerful competitive weapon, but only when this data is properly gathered, managed and analysed can its real force be harnessed. With the technology available today, largely enabled by big data, operators have at their disposal an entirely new way to take advantage of the incredible volume, variety and velocity of data that they're generating. It's now possible to store almost anything as long as you want in economic terms, which then means you can start to make sense of the data. And where real time is non-essential, operators can store first and ask questions later. One area of potential for data use is the provision of location information to third parties for targeted services. Operators are able to identify where their customers are at any given time and can even make predictions as to where they will be located later on in the day. While regulation dictates that the customer data is made anonymous, there's widespread belief that this could be a valuable asset for retailers and a useful saleable commodity for operators. The operator has the data to be able to make these and other predictions that OTT players simply wouldn't have and it's been proven that consumers are willing to interact with companies they trust, accepting that there is a trade-off for using their offerings. This is how loyalty cards and, and loyalty schemes work. Perhaps the greatest challenge that operators face in using their data to generate new revenue is that in many instances, customer data is still siloed on legacy systems. Therefore, operator IT departments need to invest in data integration and data quality tools and the necessary in-house skills and expertise to use these tools effectively. This is now happening, and Amit will go into more depth on how operators can generate new revenue streams and face the OTT threat through service-based data offerings and third-party partnerships. Another connection that can be identified, which is not perhaps widely pursued at the moment, is the correlation between customers who share the same billing address. This may indicate that users are family members and could prompt operators to offer shared data plans. Shared data plans are a growing trend. In July, the UK's first LTE operator, EE, announced the availability of shared pricing plans for its LTE customers. Already widely used in the US market, which has more than half of the world's LTE subscribers, shared pricing plans enable users to spread data consumption across devices or a group of people such as family members. In EE's case, up to five devices can be connected to a single tariff, with a supplementary cost starting at £12 per month for SIM only and £22 per month for an additional smartphone. Such a strategy can be used in a bid to stimulate greater uptake of cellular services for tablets, as EE allows these devices to be connected at £5 per month SIM only and £26 per month for a new tablet. The firm claims that typical savings for a family of four could run to more than £900 over a two-year contract period. Analysts have noted that the rate of attachment for devices such as tablets and laptops on the mobile network remains low in the UK, with John Delaney, Associate VP for Mobility at IDC, arguing that consumers are deterred by the need to buy multiple subscriptions. Delaney has said that IDC expects shared data plans to see substantial adoption in the long run. Roaming is another area of the operator's business that could benefit from improved data analytics. To increase roaming use, operators have to make sure that end users feel secure in knowing how much it will cost to use mobile services when roaming. Some groups, such as Deutsche Telekom and Orange, have introduced apps to help users stay aware of how much they have used their mobile while travelling. Moreover, there's been considerable interest among operators in numerous markets to offer free data use for certain applications, for which content providers, rather than mobile subscribers, pay the operator for consumers' use of content. Mobile operators need to assess how to make roaming tariffs more compelling, as there is significant untapped demand for roaming services, especially for data, and the biggest challenge for operators now is that their roaming services might be undercut, particularly in Europe, by new companies offering compelling services under new regulatory proposals. But in terms of data, it's difficult for operators to assess whether charging per megabyte or per daily rate 
leads to a more profitable usage. Indeed, it may be a mix of the two that's required. And after much experimentation on approaches to data roaming, operators are beginning to offer a range of tariffs to meet the demands of various customer segments, including the distinct roaming demands of enterprise and consumer users. In this way, operators can offer daily data rates with a set limit and per megabyte rates for each customer type. But to effectively deliver these offerings, operators need to know who their customers are, where they are, and what they're doing at all times. And they need to be able to turn that knowledge into actions based on analysis. The days of super growth have passed, meaning that operators must shift their focus. As industry consultancy Northstream noted in a recent paper, incremental improvements to all business areas will replace reliance on strong industry growth. In a 2012 study of telecom CEOs, IBM found that 83% of those surveyed expressed an intention to improve the ability to draw meaningful and executable insights to understand customer behaviour from available information. I'd like to hand over to Amit now, who will share with you the CVIDIA perspective on some of these issues and explore in greater depth the ways in which some of these hidden insights can be uncovered and exploited. When her presentation is finished, Amit will be on hand to answer any questions that you may have. You can put a question to Amit at any time during the presentation by typing it into the dialog box on this page and Amit will respond after her presentation. For now though, Amit, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks Mike for the introduction. Um, hello everybody, my name is Amit Daniel and I'm adding the marketing product management and business development activities within Civedia. And today the topic of my presentation is really to talk about how operators can utilize their data in order to eat targeting, proposition, and strategic initiatives in one shot. And I would like to start with a short story before jumping into the details of my presentation. So I would like to introduce you to the Williams family. That's a very typical family, which I'm sure will be sounding very familiar to some of you. And let's look at that family and uh, what we can say about that family from its own experience, not from any other angle. So we have George and we have Naomi. George runs his own small medium enterprises. He has few devices like laptop, tablet. He has his own iPhone, which is being paid by the enterprise he works at. He has few patterns. He uses a lot of tattering at work, on the go, and as well as at home. He has multiple hobbies. He likes football, biking, and likes to listen and uh, view National Geographic information. On the other side, we have his wife, Naomi. She has few devices. She has a laptop, two tablets, Galaxy S3, again, being paid by her employer. She's also an executive in marketing. Few patterns. She likes to use a lot of voice, SMS, to roam a lot. She's traveling all over the world. She's using WhatsApp and Skype, and her hobbies include reading, movies, traveling, and watching specific series on TV. They also have three kids at different ages of 14, 11, and 6. So Stella has few devices. She has a laptop, a tablet, and a Galaxy. She's registered to a very specific price plan that includes a bundle of unlimited SMSs and voice, as well as one and a half gigabytes of data. She constantly exceeds her limit and suffers from uh, bandwidth quality issues on which she complains constantly. And she has also very specific patterns of usage, such as using Skype, WhatsApp, gaming, and a lot of high-definition videos through YouTube. Jack, on the other hand, has only one device. He has his iPhone. He's registered to a bundle of unlimited SMS and voice and 500 megabytes in terms of data. He likes to use a lot WhatsApp, Facebook. He loves tennis, basketball, and action movies. And the small one, Jane, has, of course, her feature phone, which is registered to a prepaid voice-only account so her parents can always reach her in case of emergency. Let's see what characterizes them. That's like a very standard family, and it's really important for us to try and understand what we can say about that family in terms of representation of their daily activity. So they're traveling a lot. Every second weekend of the month, they're traveling, 
and they're spending something like two to four hours of driving together. They also travel abroad at least once or twice per year, and they take with them a few of their devices. They go together to music concerts a few times per year. They attend many family attractions like amusement parks and shows, etc. They watch together movies, and they purchase few online gaming. The usage of Wi-Fi back at home has been reduced because they're all subscribed to substantial data packages. But as a family, they're also subscribed to broadband, cable TV, and VOD services from their provider. That's all very nice, and that's the kind of information that each of the family members can clearly state about what characterizes them and what really symbolizes that William family from inside. Now, let's take that story and connect back to our provider, the operator. On one side, we have multiple data that is available for the operator. We have different types of XDRs, which represent their usage. We have the customer details, the device, location, the account number, point of sale, revenues, multiple types of raw data that the provider collects and has about its customers. However, the most important part of this one is really translate the raw data that is available for the operator into insights. And when I say insights, we're actually looking at the areas of correlation, relationship, patterns, and habits that can be translated out of the data that is available for the provider, such as understanding the needs and the communication habits for groups as well as for single customers looking at patterns of usage, what kind of enrichment we can add on the profile of the end user based on the data that we have collected on them. For example, identifying influencers, identifying circles of correlations such as family, small medium enterprise, friends, etc., etc. So what it all says? It all says that analytics is a very crucial element in order for operators to really target the right customers with the right mobile data pricing. Why is it so crucial? Because once an operator understands the data as well as the customer usage and needs, it means that it can create the relevant pricing models and the relevant campaigns to target the relevant segment. Secondly, it can be very innovative and think out of the box in terms of the pricing models and the business models with third parties partnerships and it can give them the capability that is very much needed for marketing departments today to trial and error. So the mode of operation is not I'm doing something and it's going to take me a very long time, but I can actually try something, make sure that whatever I do is very precise, but if it's not, I can go back to my data, understand some insights out of that, and do another trial with that campaign and that targeting. That's very nice, but let's connect back to the operator's reality. And it's all clear to us, and we can see here in the quotes provided by Deutsche Telekom as well as AT&T, that telcos are sitting on basically a treasure, which is the huge pile of data. And if they really utilize it in a very targeted approach, they will be able to get the relevant insights. So that brings us to really understanding what are the main opportunities lost and what's the potential for the operators. And looking today at the type of activities and challenges that operators are facing, one of the major areas that is really substantial in terms of profitability and revenues for the operators is management of data traffic growth. And that basically relates to four main areas. The first area is really anything related to improving the customer lifetime value, making sure that you really understand what creates loyalty and stickiness of your customers in order to generate the required data growth in terms of traffic and profitability. Secondly, managing the over-the-top challenge, different types of competition or competition that is potentially out there is really crucial for the operator in order to create a new source of revenues that currently is only in very early stages. Third, looking at the major investments that were made by operators today in deploying 4G LTE, they really look to maximize their return and make sure they do anything they can in order to optimize and generate revenues out of that investment. 
And the fourth one, which is tightly related to the same challenge, is really making sure that we as an operator are capable to identify the relevant segments that we want to target and based on this one, know which one to pinpoint in order to generate the growth in terms of revenues and profitability from data. If that is being done properly, it will for sure enable the operator to increase the revenues and the profitability from that area. But when we look today at CMOs and generally marketing departments, there are different challenges that are taking place. First of all is to collect the data that is currently across different silos and departments within the organization and being able from a marketer's perspective to really monetize the best amount of valuable customer data for its own benefit and use. Secondly, is to really return the investment in terms of the high-speed networks and to generate the required data growth and maximize revenues. Third one is to think about new sources of revenues in order to compensate the decreasing profitability that he currently sees from within his own customer base offer premium customer experience in order to retain the competitiveness and the market share that is very crucial nowadays, quickly and effectively launch new products that are tailored to the specific needs and preferences of his customers, and being able to restructure the, the product catalog that it is offering his end user in order to really be enough uh, dynamic in order to align with the new market changes. When we look specifically at what is happening now in Europe, then you can clearly see it, that diagram representing the status between 2010 to 2016, then European telecom revenues are constantly decreasing. And you can see that on mobile, six line, and uh, pay TV, which is less significant, but that's constantly the case. So operators need to find ways in order to really compensate themselves in terms of profitability and generate revenues. However, when we look specifically at mobile data, that's for sure the main growth engine for operators. If we look at the left side, we can see that only once the iPhones and the smartphones have been launched, that really created the new generation and new subscriptions for 3G, not to mention 4G, within the market. But when we look at the right side, uh, looking at data revenues versus data traffic, the problem is the traffic is constantly growing and volumes are decoupled, but when you look for data, it's less money. The revenues are very stable and they're not increasing in the same level of data volume increase. On the other side, when we look specifically at a certain type of device such as tablets, they're a major trigger for stronger and much more substantial data consumption. We can still see, as an example in France, when you look at tablet penetration in recent years, you can see that some of the devices are connected, but most of the tablets are still to be connected, which represent a major potential of source of data consumption growth for operators. On the other side, when we look at the major trend that is taking place in the U.S. and Europe in terms of offering shared data plans pricing, we can see that this is becoming a major growth in terms of the output increase from a customer and on average, we're looking at one gigabyte sold at a price range from three to five euros, therefore increasing substantial the revenues and the output per customer, which is one of the ways for operators to increase the data consumption. So what I would like to cover now is few use cases that are being identified as potential areas of operators to really accelerate and generate data traffic. So the first uh, package or use case I would like to talk about is how to accelerate data penetration and maximize data revenue for operators. One of the areas of that package, and I'm not going to elaborate the entire types of use cases that we have identified and we're working with operators on, I just want to give you an hint and understanding of the areas that we see substantial for operators today, is how to identify the best candidates for data proposition. The main area here is really to find sophisticated combinations of customers, profile, device, and other attributes such as usage 
in order to identify customers that once they will start using data, they will use it on a steady basis. They will increase the volume of data usage. They will be potentially relevant for upgrading to different data bundles. And one of the areas is also upgrading to a more advanced device. So one of the major issues in that use case is to get out of the analytics, out of the data that is available for operators, specific segmentations that share those attributes. And once the operator has access to these segmentations, you will be able to dramatically improve the targeting of the data proposition. And then we're talking about um, experience that operators, once doing that, will be able to increase their conversion rate by 20 to 25 percent, which is, of course, very substantial. And once these operators will be focusing on customers for whom the data adoption or the upgrade of data bundle is likely to have the most positive impact, get, that can by itself increase the data revenue per customer by over 10 percent. So examples of customers like that will be to find a relevant segment that has the highest likelihood to start using data services daily. For example, identifying customers that are known data consumers today and potentially will be relevant tomorrow to start generate revenues for the operator. And that's based on historical data and different models that can be created in the background and a marketeer can now use in order to define the next campaign and offering for these customers. It can also look at certain combinations of customers that have a common area of usage or ARPU that are likely to be impacted most once you offer them the right proposition. And also to look at customers that are now generating revenues for the operators from data but can potentially move to a much greater package that will uh, give an additional revenues for the operator. One of the other use cases in the package of acceleration of data revenue is really to identify and to leverage the customer relations and influence. For example, if the operator out of his data will be able to reveal the related customer groups. And when I'm saying customer groups, I'm going back to my story about the Williams family, is to identify customers that currently the operator is not aware about any correlation uh, between them, such as being a family or a small business. And once out of the raw data that the operator has in his hands, he will be able to identify that related customer groups you will then be able to identify the best candidates, for example, for shared data packs and look at their overall data needs, what's their usage, what their patterns, locations, devices, demographics, in order to come in with the right proposition to the right audience. Another example, if out of the data, operators will be able to find customers who frequently share the data allowance. For example, they connect additional devices via tethering. That will enable the operators to think about new propositions and cross-sell and upsell to other services, for example, wireless routers. So you will be able to add it to the customer in order to generate additional revenues and create stickiness of that customer to the operator. Another example, identify data users who move their SIM card between several devices because they have a modem, a tablet, and smartphone, and the best solution for them will get a shared data plan from that operator to serve multiple devices, but it should be something very competitive that covers the specific needs of that segment. Another example related to that is really looking at influencers. Once the operator will be able out of the data to identify influencers, those influencers are very relevant for the operator to understand what's their profile, what's their usage habits, their devices, what price plans they're using, how much money and profits they're generating, because they will be the very good candidates for data bundle and device upgrades. Once that will be done, and you will be able to identify that relevant segment, you will be able to prioritize the customers when targeting the data bundle with the relevant campaigns and it will be potentially offering their influencers much better terms to ensure that once they adopt the offering, they will be influencing other related groups such as their friends, families, etc., therefore creating stickiness and much better targeting for the operator. Let's look at another package, 
Another package is anything that deals with service-based data propositions and third-party data monetization. Let's talk about a few of the examples and the experience in terms of results from the operators. When the operator will be able to offer his customers relevant service-driven rather than volume-driven data propositions to really improve and provide a premium quality of service, and that, of course, by itself is going to generate a new source of data revenue, from our experience, that's going to generate an increase in subscribers' output by 3 to 5 euros. Examples will include analysis out of the data of customers' groups that have high volume usage of specific applications, such as Facebook or Twitter. And then you can offer them potentially unlimited per application they're using, a fixed monthly fee as an add-on to their basic package. Another example is identifying potential customers that are frequently using video streaming or gaming and then either offer them video optimization service or additional third-party offerings such as gaming on top of the bundles and proposition coming from an operator in a win-win model. That's, of course, by itself opening a new way of out-of-the-box business models with third parties where revenues will be generated from outside and the operator will be giving his customers something that is tailored to their needs and, of course, creates another benefit and differentiation from its competition. One way to look at that as well is to really try and segment the customer based on their preferences and needs, identifying customers that are music fans, sports fans, entertainment, hospitality, and different kind of categories that will really enable the operator to give them the relevant applications in the relevant quality of service and to give them a discount or promotion coming from within the operator or from outside. One of the examples can be to do cross-sell and upsell of operators when the operator is a triple or quad play and he would like to offer VOD services or broadband propositions including content that is very relevant for his customers. One of the other areas that we're starting to see a lot of demand in the market is to identify customers that are frequently using voice over IP on their mobile, such as Skype or other peer-to-peer -peer applications. This is really crucial in different areas. One of the areas is to offer guaranteed quality of experience for voice over IP calls for an additional fee, generating additional premium quality and revenues for the operator or alternatively really identifying that he's using another over-the-top application such as WhatsApp or Skype and others and offer the operator's own voice over IP proposition, therefore creating the stickiness and generating the traffic on the operator and collecting much more data that he currently do not see because it's on the over-the-top application provider. So those are only a few examples of how out of the data you can actually look at the service base and really put the customer at the end and the middle in terms of being centric and identifying something that is really tailored to his needs and habits. One of the areas that we clearly see a major growth in is looking out of the service proposition and how to monetize the mobile application downloads and over the top services. For example, Identify customers based on the used applications, their areas of interest, their most used over-the-top services such as chat, voice over IP applications. And this brings me to the examples I just described, uh, which we started to see where third parties are being in um, subsidizing activities together with operators in order to offer additional volume or better quality of service for customers that are consuming lots of their content and data on a specific content provider. So for example, if I am a sports provider and the operator will approach me based on the data that he analyzed, understanding the potential of customers, how much data they're browsing, what's their top content provider, when they would like to get it, what's the quality of service they're getting, and I will be able to share that aggregated data with the over-the-top provider or content provider, whereas the content provider will be providing subsidized bundles in terms of better quality of service like speed and bandwidth or additional gigabytes specifically enable the customer to use that for its own preferences on that sports content provider, that's a win-win. It generates something that is of greater value for the end user, 
generates the revenues from outside by monetizing the data for the operator and of course for the content provider because he's now capable to get much more exposure and advertising for the customers that will be visiting his website, videos, etc. Another example that we started to see is based on that data, strategy and innovation people trying to think about promotions of third party as part of the offering that operators are pushing for their customers. For example, identifying gaming customers, customers that are really targeted, for example, young customers. And based on this one, in order to create stickiness to their network, being able to offer them a specific gaming free of charge that will be subsidized by a third party because you would like to get access to that customer. That, of course, by itself opens new models of combined bundles that are very relevant and free loyalty offers, campaigns, anything that will be relevant which do not require any confidential or sharing information outside the operator space. We're talking about aggregated content that is only relevant for that area. So going back to the Williams family, all the information I gave you about that family is very much relevant, but not all of that is really exposed and available for the operator. So let's say the first stage is really to identify them as members of a single family, whereas most of the operators do not necessarily see them even as an entity, but actually see them as five separate price plans that are siloed and there's no connection between them. So once the operator will be able to use the analytics and the data to do the correlation and really identify them as the Williams family, potentially it could offer them something that is of much greater value, therefore creating loyalty and stickiness for the long term. For example, offering a shared data plan that covers the different needs of the entire family members. For example, because they are very strong gaming and sports, giving them the incentives for gaming on sports provider is part of the pricing mandal. And not to mention, of course, this is just as an example, doing any kind of cross-sell and upsell with other services of the provider, such as broadband and VOD offerings, specifically in areas that interest the family. This is something that is crucial. This is something that we see the market moving on. And we really, really believe that if the operators from a marketing perspective will be able to get the tools and the capabilities and the relevant modeling and analysis that they need today, it will give them the capabilities to think out of the box about new customers to target and new propositions and campaigns to be uh, executed on their network before actually going today to campaigns rather than understanding initially the potential and the relevancy for the customers. So I want just to finalize before moving into the Q&A session uh, to bring a few general overview presentation slides about Civedia, just uh, for the ones of you that are not familiar with Civedia. Civedia is a company that exists in the market for already 12 years now. We're a global company that provides solutions in the area of revenue analytics to communication and digital service providers. Uh, we currently serve 150 operators in 64 countries. Most of them are the largest operators in the world, such as uh, BT and the entire Telefonica, AT&T, Vodafone, Orange, MTN, and many, many others. We are globally processing 150 billion transactions per day. And the major area on which we contribute to the operator is the bottom line. We're saving over $12 billion for uh, our customers annually. And that's done by partnering with the leading vendors in the world. So what do we do? We actually turn your data into value. We collect data that comes from different sources, such as probe, data warehouse, CRM, order, mediation, billing, DPI information, location, and device. We collect all of that data, aggregate it, and enrich it on the platform that we have already installed within 150 operators currently in the world. And we provide solutions in two areas. The left side talks about the business protection that mainly targets the CFOs, whereas we bring solutions in the area of risk management, revenue assurance, and fraud management that really make sure that the data is being analyzed and protected from different revenue leakages out of the network. 
And on the right side, we provide a bucket of solutions that are targeting the marketing, the CMO, and the sales and sales operation people. We provide solutions like the marketing analytics and the sales performance management. And once we integrate within the operator and collect the data, we are capable to enrich that in order to give the relevant insights to the different departments within the organization. And the last slide is going to talk about the specific product offering, which is the Enrich. The Enrich is basically a solution that marketeers is using, and it's a strategic tool to support their decisions in terms of the different business objectives and challenges that marketeers are facing. It's a modular, pre-modeled customer analytics solution. So it comes in, as you can see, with eight different specific business packages. Each one of them includes already the predefined and pre-modeled areas that we know from experience in discussions with marketing departments and working with people that have the experience in that market to really touch the different insights that are relevant for the marketeers, including very advanced data analysis and modeling that we embed as part of our solution. The areas are spanning from different uh, spectrums, so you can see acceleration of data penetration like we discussed today, the service-based data offering, strategizing your activities in terms of LTA uh, migration, anything that deals with optimization of price plan management, managing the huge chaos of uh, tens of thousands of uh, price plans that are legacy and how you manage them, improving the customer retention, acquisition, doing optimization from prepaid to postpaid, and specifically handling the vertical of roaming. All of that is pre-configured, pre-modeled for a marketeer, so all the data collection, everything is ready. The reliance that you have from a, a marketeer perspective on IT network BI people is being dramatically minimized because we create the universe as well as the insight for the marketeers. So we think like a marketeer what is required and what is the next thing you would like to see on your daily activities. And it all comes in also with an executive 360 degrees view that includes a specific set of always relevant data analytics as well as our own analysis sandbox. So you still within the predefined modeled analytics, you still have new areas that you would like to explore. You will be able using a very simple user-friendly tool to create your own analytical views. And that's exactly the tool that we see today that marketeers need in terms of uh, targeting their main business challenges that they're facing today. So I would like to thank you today for spending the, the time with me over the webinar, and uh, we will be stay tuned for your Q&A over the blog. Thank you. Thanks very much, Amit, for a fascinating presentation. Now, as I mentioned, Amit is free to take questions from the audience. To submit a question, just type it into the dialog box, and Amit's responses will appear as text in the comments stream. There's no audio element to this Q&A. So with that, it just remains for me to thank Amit and to thank CVIDIA for making today's telecoms.com webinar possible, and also to thank everyone who joined us for the presentation. I hope you all found it useful, and I wish you all a very good day.